we're going to be looking at standing waves, which are also known as stationary waves. Standing waves occur when you have two progressive waves, that is, waves that are travelling, and they're of the same frequency, and they're moving in opposite directions. When they meet, they superpose or interfere with each other. So here you have a blue wave and a green wave of the same frequency, travelling in opposite directions, and the black line is representing the resultant of these two waves. It's the standing wave pattern that is being produced. And a key thing to note is that the crest of the standing wave is not moving along. It's staying at its same position. So it's a stationary wave. Here are the standing wave patterns at five different moments of time. So here you have at time equals zero, quarter of a period later, half a period later, three quarters of a period later, and a full period later. So at time equals zero, you can see that the blue and the green waves are in phase. And so constructive interference is occurring. We're getting maximum amplitude for our standing wave pattern. Quarter of a period later, the blue wave has moved quarter of a wavelength to the right, and the green wave has moved a quarter of a wavelength to the left. So now the two waves are in antiphase, and so destructive interference has occurred. The waves have cancelled each other out to give you zero displacement. Half a period later, then the blue wave has moved a distance of half a wavelength from its original time to the right, and the green wave has moved half a wavelength to the left. So now the waves are back in phase. And again, constructive interference has occurred where we get maximum amplitude. However, note, at time equals zero, at this point we were having maximum positive amplitude. This point now has maximum negative amplitude. And vice versa. So three quarters of a period later, the waves go back into antiphase and destructive interference occurs where again they cancel each other out to give you zero displacement. And a full period later, both the waves have moved one full wavelength in the opposite direction. So they're back in phase, similar to time equals zero, and we're getting constructive interference. So it's called a standing wave or a stationary wave because the wave is not moving along. But you can see that the pattern is constantly changing. And that's because the phase relationship between the two progressive waves is constantly changing. They're going in phase and then out of phase, then back into phase and out of phase and everything in between. This diagram is showing you the standing wave at different moments in time, so from one extreme to its other extreme, and then the in-between stages. So positions A, C, E and G are known as nodes, they're permanent nodes, because these points are always at zero displacement. So at these points, destructive interference is always occurring. Positions B, D and F are known as antinodes. This is the point on the standing wave where you get maximum amplitude. And this is where constructive interference is occurring.
and the distance between successive or consecutive nodes or antinodes represents half a wavelength. So A to C is half a wavelength. If we complete the full wavelength, so A to E would represent a full wavelength. So then you can see the distance between nodes or distance between consecutive antinodes is half a wavelength. We're now going to compare progressive waves with standing waves. Both progressive waves and standing waves can either be transverse or longitudinal. So sound waves can produce standing wave patterns and sound waves are longitudinal waves. In regards to the energy along the wave, Progressive waves transfer energy from one point to another, whereas standing waves store energy along the wave. Energy is not being transferred from one place to another because the wave is stationary. In regards to the wave speed or the wave velocity, progressive waves have a velocity v, whereas standing waves are stationary waves so their velocity is zero. So yes they're made up of two progressive waves that are traveling in opposite direction so one wave will have a velocity v and the other wave velocity minus v so the overall velocity of the standing wave is zero. If we look at the amplitudes at different points along the wave for a progressive wave which are our blue and green waves you can see each point will have the same amplitude, we assume you know energy loss. And remember amplitude represents the maximum displacement from equilibrium. Whereas for the standing wave, which is represented by the black line, you can see that the amplitude varies between maximum amplitude where is our position of antinode to zero amplitude which is the position of nodes. Regarding the frequency of the oscillations, the frequency of the standing wave is the same frequency as the frequency of the two progressive waves that make up the standing wave and so each particle along the progressive wave and along the standing wave have the same frequency. However, if we look at the phase relationship between adjacent points along a progressive wave, you can see that they're slightly out of step with each other if we take a snapshot in time. And so they have different phase relationships. But if we look at the standing wave, you can see that they're moving, adjacent points are moving in step with each other. Yes, they have different amplitudes, but they're in step with each other and so they're moving in phase with each other. Standing waves can be set up using stretched strings. So one end of a string is attached to a vibration generator and the other end is held under tension by a load. The vibration generator vibrates and sends a wave along the string. At the pulley end, the wave is reflected back down the string. So you have two progressive waves traveling in opposite directions. So that is the instant wave and the reflected wave interfering to produce a standing wave. So motor vibrations are also known as harmonics. These are standing wave patterns that give you maximum amplitude. The simplest standing wave pattern for a stretch string is this, where you can see we represent it by one loop. So at each ends of the string are fixed because they cannot move, we're getting nodes. And at the center we get the antinode, maximum amplitude. So the length of the string is representing half a wavelength.
and we say this string is vibrating at its fundamental note or fundamental frequency F0. So it's the lowest frequency of a harmonic series. This diagram is representing the second harmonic for a stretched string. So again, at the end, as they're fixed, we get nodes. But now we're getting two loops of the standing wave pattern. So we're getting a node at the centre and then two antinodes between the nodes. So now this length of string is representing a whole wavelength. So you can see then that the wavelength has halved compared to the first harmonic. So the frequency of vibration of the standing wave has doubled. So it's two times the fundamental frequency. This diagram is showing you the third harmonic for a stretched string. So you can see now we have three loops. And so the length of the string represents one and a half wavelengths. So compared to the first harmonic, the wavelength, we've got a third of the wavelength, which means then the string is vibrating at three times the fundamental frequency. This animation is showing you the first five harmonics for a stretched string. So in the time it takes for the first harmonic to complete one full oscillation, the second harmonic will complete two, the third three, the fourth four and the fifth five oscillations in that same time. The so standing waves can be set up in so the notes represent a specific frequency of a standing wave. And so the notes or the frequency you can get from a guitar depends on the length of the string. And so it depends on where you position your fingers on the frets of the guitar. The frequency also depends upon the tension in the string, which can be adjusted by these tension bars. And finally, the frequency can also depend upon the mass or the thickness of the string. And so for a guitar, they have strings of different thicknesses. And between these three factors, you can obtain a full range of notes, frequencies of sound.